my life was forever turned upside down. It, I can't even describe it in some words because it was so difficult to deal with. The strife from that particular event just turned everything sideways. It, it, it affected my wife, my other two children. It was just incredibly hard to deal with. I grew up in Winston-Salem. I was the oldest of three sons. My mom and dad, they were amazing parents and they were very Christian. We attended uh, St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Winston-Salem and they were very consistently and regularly attending that church. Things started to change. Uh, I started to become less interested in going to church and a lot of the friends that I met when I went to Carolina, I ended up, they didn't go to church and it made it that much more likely that I stopped attending church. I liken it a little bit to sort of like what the prodigal son did. He went off to do his own thing and I was off at Carolina doing my thing. Uh, I ended up graduating from Carolina, uh, moved on from there, uh, got a job at UNC Chapel Hill, began working there, and during that time when I was working in Chapel Hill, I ended up meeting uh, Melody. Uh, we uh, hit it off and eventually we actually got married. And at that point, we ended up having three kids and all I can say is at that point in my life, I was pretty happy, everything was good, and I was busy. Then, in 1991, something happened that changed me forever. Uh, I was watching my youngest son, Colin, and he, he lost him in a drowning accident. My life was forever turned upside down. It, I can't even describe it in some words because it was so difficult to deal with. The strife from that particular event just turned everything sideways. It, it, it affected my wife, my other two children. It was just incredibly hard to deal with. Basically, what I tried to do is try to figure out some way that I could deal with it. Some of the things that I tried to do as I spent time reading different books about grief, uh, tried to talk to different people. Uh, we even joined a special group called Compassionate Friends, which is a group that has only parents who have lost children. All these things were a little bit helpful, but nothing really took the, the overriding pain and strife that was in my life. Uh, I didn't know exactly what to do, some friends of ours that were in the community that attended Triangle Church, they came to us and at the time basically said, you know, we'll help you with this. They went over here to Triangle Church. At the time, Ray Cobb was the pastor and they asked him, would you please do the funeral service for the Rodgmans about this thing? And even though we did not attend the church, he did it. But you know what, the way I'll see it, <laughs> I didn't know it at the time, but God had a plan. We went through that service. I got connected a little bit to that church. Uh, I still was searching for how do I deal with this situation. I did not want the rest of my family to be destroyed. In reading a lot, I realized that a lot of families break up because of this kind of event. It can overwhelm them emotionally. Out of the blue, maybe not so much out of the blue, but I decided to buy a Bible at the local books, bookstore. I took that book home and at one point I just opened it. God put me on the story of David where he committed adultery and had Bathsheba's husband killed. A very interesting story just to turn to randomly I think God was telling me something. That story affected me at that time. I've still got that Bible on the shelf marked on the same page that I turned to 32 years ago. It was special. But days later, I can't even tell you exactly how long it was, I woke up in the middle of the night. I was just really in tears. I couldn't understand how I couldn't deal with it. 
and I finally hit the rock bottom. And the, I just reached out in the middle of the night, totally dark, God, please help me. And he answered that prayer. I felt something I've never felt. I think it was the Holy Spirit just coming straight down through me. It was like I was being washed by cold water on the inside. I didn't have any idea what that was. But I had a sense of peace at that point in my life that I knew he was with me. And that just gave me such an incredible lift. And I asked and I pleaded and I prayed, said, please God, don't let this event, this death of Colin, ruin the rest of our family. I've seen so much devastation in other situations. Basically, that's, that's kind of the event that triggered it. God was using this in a way that I didn't expect. As our lives went on, that helped me. We started, I started first going to church and trying just to see if that helped. And it really did. I can distinctly remember times when I would be standing in the pews and they would sing some song that was touching my heart. And I couldn't even say the words. Because I was crying <laughs> and the people on each side of me were singing and those words just lifted me up it was incredible I, I could see that God was even in the people that were around me were, were using them to help me get through this as as time went on a little bit my wife tells me says look I want to have another child Okay, well, we'll see what, you know, I don't know whether that can happen or not. Prayers were put out, our prayers. Some of our close friends knew that we were going to try to do that again. And thank the Lord, in 1992, Mary Catherine was born. That was such a tremendous turnaround. It didn't erase the death of Colin, but it gave us something positive to, to focus on. It was so special, and it seemed to uplift my wife in particular, and I certainly was thrilled that God had answered that prayer. As we went through, we, I, one of the things that we did is we got more involved at the church here at Triumph. We started off just bringing the kids, coming to classes. At some point, somebody prayerfully asked me to teach a Sunday school, adult Sunday school class. And I, I agreed to do it. I was nervous about it, and I went ahead and got involved in that way. Uh, my wife, using her pediatric skills, she was involved in the, in the church nursery, so she was helping out with the kids. We got more and more involved in the church, and then a number of years later, all three of our kids, Melissa, Kevin, and Mary Catherine, were all baptized on the same day by Ray Cobb in the church. And I was going to tell you, that was one of the happiest days of my life. We had given our kids, given them to God so that he would watch over them. Because as parents, we can only do so much. Uh, truly a blessing. And from that point forward, I would say, well, I just got more and more involved. God led me to other things. Another person in the church also asked me to prayerfully consider getting involved in the kids' ministries. And I decided I would give that a shot. So I, would, I would branched out. And I had started going into teaching third, fourth, fifth grade Sunday school and other things like that. And I, it turned out, I think God knew this was a sweet spot for me in terms of being able to help and to carry out his blessed that I am an avid sports fan of all kinds. And I think one another way that God has helped lead me is getting involved in sports ministries. So I have been coaching not only my all three of my kids in basketball, soccer, baseball, softball, volleyball. I do the same thing with my grandkids. So God has given me a way to participate in their lives. And I teach them what I think is a healthy Christian perspective of sports. Because sometimes you know well who I'm talking about. Some coaches think they're playing for the Super Bowl and coaching six-year-olds. Not always a good thing. So I've been on a number of mission trips with many people from our church. I've been to Haiti, I've been to Mexico, I've been to Kenya. And each time I've gone to a different place, God has shown me different things that have blessed me every day. Melody and I now have three grown children living on their own. 
uh, and five grandkids. So we feel truly blessed and uh, we are still involved in this particular church triangle and we love it. We still have many friends and have made lots of new ones recently. So uh, we are really, really happy. Uh, I would say if I had any one thing that I could sum it up with, I would say it would be the John Newton song, uh, Amazing Grace, the chorus. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. That's, I see, I read that story about John Newton and it really affected me because I sort of see myself in being somebody who didn't know where he was until God pointed it out to him. I, I hope that anyone who is listening to my testimony will take it to heart. God can use anything if you give him a chance. If you ask, if you knock on the door, or if you seek him, he will answer. Just give him a try. I know he'll do for you what he's done for me. So my invitation is, come and see.